Cool. So before we start, like always, I just want to check in. Uh, just give me nods, all right? Sam, this is obviously not for you. By the way, guys, some context. Sam is a pro producer, a DJ. He is considering setting up a course of his own in the future. So he's just tuning in to kind of see how we run this. Cool. So yeah, for the first three people, I guess, on my screen, Prayansh, Likit, and Eric, um, just like give me nods. Have you got Ableton? Yes, yes. Likit, yes, nice. So he, that's, there's no, there's no maybe. There's yes and no. It's not, it's a binary answer. No, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So no, still, that's... still uh, working on Tractor. All good, man. All good. You pumped out a mix uh, last week. You're more than forgiven. Uh, have you warped three tracks? Yes, Eric. Okay, good stuff. Browns, one track. Cool. That's good. Um, and then have you placed markers at the different sections of the tracks to understand Browns has? Cool. Eric? No, that's all good. No worries, man. I'm guessing like that, that stuff, you know, don't, don't feel like you have to do that. I'm sure you, you kind of are familiar with that. And then a list of what you hear in different sections, like the intro has drums and synths, etc. cetera. Branch, did you get to that? Wow, that's impressive. I, that was a, I didn't expect anyone to, to do all of that because it was quite a bit of work, but well done. And if, yeah, if, the other, if you guys haven't, then you know, feel free to just catch up. It's all on, on last time's video. But this class is, when, we first, when I first was thinking of this Ableton class, I was, it was a progression to the people that were doing the DJ class. So the initial aim was like, anyone who wants to make their own mashups and edits, so you can add something a bit more creative to your DJ sets. Um, so that's why we're starting like this, where we're really working with audio before we get to anything like MIDI. Um, so if the people who just want to learn how to do DJ edits want to drop off, then that's fine. But yeah, last time we learned how to sync tracks to a grid, which is called warping. And then today kind of builds on that. So only after you've warped a track and you then like, you know, slice it, dice it, reverse it, kind of remix for the lack of a better word, a, a track. So yeah, this really like builds on, on warping, but we'll still review warping a little bit quickly um, just because I know it's a bit tricky. Okay. So last time we had an inspirational quote and it was um, art is how we decorate space. Music is how we decorate time. This time the inspirational quote is Divyaksh, remember to change your Ableton output. Thank you. Let me do that first. I put that in there just for me. Zoom audio device. Can you guys hear things? Yeah, okay, good. Uh, the actual quote, that was just a fail safe, is I put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. Now, Sam and Eric, I'm looking at you. You guys might know where I'm going with this. Lick it and Pryanch, I don't know if you, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, we are talking about audio, nothing else, Sam. Wipe that cheeky grin off your face. So does anyone know who came up with this quote? Or oh, whose lyric this is? Eric knows. Nice. He likes his hip hop. No? All right. No worries, guys. So it is Missy Elliott. I put my, flame, I put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Okay? And I'll, I'll show you why I'm talking about it in a second. I'm curious to see if Eric and Sam already know this. It's such a like, producer geeky thing. But if you've heard the track, then you know it goes like this, right? One time exclusive. Come on, is it worth it? Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. It's your permit if it's when yet. It's your permit if it's when yet. Okay, so why am I calling this out? Do you hear that after she says that there's some gibberish here? So let me play it again. Thing down, flip it and reverse it. It's your permit if it's when yet. It's your permit if it's when yet. All right, so fun fact, if you actually cut that, paste it um, over here, and if you literally reverse it, she's saying, <laughs> oh, wait, that, that fucked up, hang on. Um, stick that. And reverse it there. That's right. Put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. So she's actually saying, I put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. And then she's reversed her saying that. And so in the track, it sounds like gibberish. It's your it's but if you just reverse it, this is which is what I did over here. It's actually. So anyway, it's a little geeky thing. But like a, when this was kind of discovered, like what was Missy Elliott saying? A lot of the producers were geeking out. Like, actually, if you take it and reverse it, it's just this line. Um, that she said over here. Down, 
said again, but in reverse. And the reason I wanted to start the class with that is because by the end of this class, you're going to actually be able to do that. You're going to be able, you're going to be able to take a piece of audio, chop it like she did, paste it. So it's exactly the next bar and then reverse just the vocal and keep the drums if you like. Right. So, um, yeah, a little bit of a, uh, non-traditional beginning to the class, but I, I thought, I thought that'd be a cool fun fact. You can, you can now quote if anyone's ever playing that track at a house party. Okay. So before we start, we're going to quickly review warping. So just in front of you all, I'm going to warp an electronic track, an acoustic track, and then an acapella. And then we're going to get to um, slicing and dicing. So that's how do you put your thing down, clip it and reverse it basically. All right. Um, cool. So yeah, just for everyone's practice, you know, to warp a track first, find the track. So I've loaded up some tracks here for this class. So let's take an electronic track. I'm going to choose Tame Impala's the less I know, the better. Um, so you might think that's not an electronic track that has guitar. So the reason I chose this track is I want to like change perception of what electronic music is. A lot of the music you hear is electronic. What that means is it's gone through a computer. There's a click track. It's warped to a grid and then exported. So just because it has guitars and live drums doesn't mean it's an acoustic track. It, it could be the technical term is electroacoustic. So it's actually, um, you know, it's got acoustic elements, but an electronic bass behind it. So now let's hear the track, all right? The first thing you want to do when you warp a track is you want to find the one, right? So, cool, everyone can hear it, yeah? Nice. Now, if we were to just go in the, I don't know if you saw the notes, I said there's the shortcut Bangalore method and there's, there's the long LA proper method. The shortcut Bangalore method is like, Ableton's put a grid marker down there. It should be the one. I can just right click and go warp from here. But over here, that wouldn't work because that's not the one. Can you listen to how it starts again? So the one is actually over there, right? So here's a new trick I'm going to show you to speed up the process. Just right click where the one is at the transient marker. Okay. So the transient marker is that little clip. Say set 1.1.1 here and then Right click, warp from here straight. Cool. So now if you hear it and put the metronome on, it should be in sync. That's it. It's warped. And I can even go further in the track and check. Cool. It's warped. So any questions? I'm just speeding through a review on warping. All good. All right. So the only new thing I showed you is the set 1.1. Now, acoustic track. I didn't show you this last time because it's a bit annoying, but I think now that you're familiar with the topic of warping, it's important to show you. So another absolute banger from the vaults for y'all is Give Me the Night by George Benson. So it starts like, well, you know, the, let's just hear it first. Metronome off, just, just to hear it. I just want to take my clothes off every time it starts. I don't know about y'all. I'll keep them on. So. What we want to do now is find the one, but it's already found the one. Let's hear it again. Cool. And then the, the notes from that I shared with you said, if it's an electronic track, you, if it's an acoustic track, you want to click warp from here, not warp from here straight. Just so Ableton understands it's not a straight grid. It's like a, it's a bit more dynamic. So you just click warp from here. But the thing is, it's still not going to get it a hundred percent right because it's human error. So now let's put the metronome on and see how we go. So far, so good, right? It's actually pretty on point, but every drum is human. So if we fast forward, like, can you hear that it's falling off? Can you also see over here that it's falling off? Like this should obviously be there. And how do I know that? Because it's obviously the end of the bar. Just listen. So not warp an acoustic track, guys, not hard. Just grab that transient marker, move it to where it should be, and then double click, right? I call that stapling the warp marker in place, double clicking it. It's not the official term, but I think it's a good way of thinking of it. You're like moving something and then staple. It's like, now don't move, stay there, all right? And then we keep listening and we just keep doing that. Basically, wherever we're here, it's falling off. Don't go all the way in forward because it's going to be off by a lot. The street until the morning, and it's, you're not 
going to know what's what. Just keep going from here because this is pretty close now. And listen to where it falls off next. Okay, we can see it's starting to fall off. So just click, drag, staple, and you'll get faster with it, all right? By the way, to zoom in, I'm just putting my cursor on the magnifying glass over here and pulling down, okay? You can also pinch, but in Ableton, a lot of people just prefer to use this. It's a bit of a different method of zoom than any other DAW. Uh, it also works on this over here, so the timeline. Um, so you move to where you want to zoom to and then you pull down, okay? There's also pinch and there's also plus and minus on your keyboard. Um, but for now, we're just gonna, we're just gonna use this. That's pretty off. So let's go back a bit. All right, so I can catch that and put it back. So you get the idea, okay? You have to do that for the whole track and then you have a warp track. Why would you want to do that? Because now Pranch is DJing a party and there's a few, you know, people like my dad and they're like, give me some disco. And now Pranch can actually play this track on Tractor. Whereas earlier, you could, but it'd be tricky to beat match it and um, add quantized effects and all those things. Okay, so moving on. Acoustic track. Any, any questions on that? Pretty good? All right. This next one um, is acapella. So what is an acapella? It's where you found, because you're very lucky, you like a song, and you find a version where they have just the studio acapella. So just the person singing with no instrumentals at the back. So now, to warp an acapella, it can be quite tricky because there's no grid. So you're like, how do I know exactly where it falls, right? So what you do, a trick that I've learned, is you can find the original track, because that's already made to a grid, find where the acapella starts. So I'm going to take No Eyes by Claptone. I'm going to play it. I'm going to go to where the acapella starts. And now. It's a lonely night. Oh. So firstly, why is it sounding so slow? You can have a look over here. It's meant to be at 120, obviously, but it's playing at 110, my project BPM. So I'm just, my highlighter is glitching. It's weird. One second, guys. Let's try that again. There we go. Um, okay, so yeah, this should be at 120, just to match the vibe of this. It's a lonely night. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my one there for now. Because I don't need to actually warp this full track. Okay, make sure it's actually starting on a grid. Like if it's if it's over here or something, you're like it's warped. It's alone. But it's gonna be off because it's off the grid. So keep it close to the grid, and then do the old warp from here straight. Cool. And I'll just check that it's warped by clicking the metronome. So it's a lonely night. Everybody's okay. So, sorry, Pranch, we're just getting into the counting and I stopped, I saw that. But anyway, I now have a, the master track. So I know where the acapella should go. Now, I pull the acapella into this lane over here, just below it. Don't worry about warping it just yet. First, let me find where exactly does the acapella start? Because there's one of those acapellas that doesn't start on the one. See, this is the one. No voice there, but the voice actually comes in the middle here. It's a lonely night. So, it's a, it's a, it's a, that's where it is, right? So maybe I, I make a cut there for now. The shortcut for that is Command E. We're gonna go just into all of that stuff later. But now I'm gonna drag that acapella and find the exact same starting point, like pretty much where the sound just starts. So about there, okay? Um, and all these tricks I'm using, like how did I delete, how did I move? That's what the rest of the class is about. I'm just showing you how to warp an acapella in case you're interested in doing that in the future. So now the thing is, we know where this starts. We found the right point. And we also know that the BPM for this is 120 because it's written on the original track. So all I need to do is take this acapella, extend it out that I find this is where the one is, right? It's a lonely night. Okay, so now they're in sync, that's good. What I wanna do is with this acapella, I wanna like, where, wherever that, that one is, which I know like this over here is like, where the track is, where the clip is beginning, basically. So move that back so it matches. It's a lonely, that's not it. It's a lonely night. That's a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it's okay for now. Um, and go to that start clip start marker, which I just showed you over here. Set the one over there. So right click set one here. Walk from here straight, but. This BPM is all over the place because Ableton's struggling to find the BPM, but you know what the BPM is because in the clip above it's 120. So just go down, click 120, 
look, as always, the last step would have moved a little bit. So nudge it back a bit. There we go. Um, or as always, change it to Complex Pro. And then let's listen. It's a lonely night. Everybody's happy. You might be thinking, you might be thinking, I can't hear anything different. That's because it's so perfectly in sync. So if I, you know, just solo, S is solo. If I solo just the acapella, and now you have the metronome. It's a lonely night. Everybody's happy. Been turning around. Cool. So that's a little shortcut way to um, warp an acapella. So that can be really handy. All right. Now I'm going to actually start the slicing and dicing part, but I thought that would be good to know because now you can be a bit more, sorry, there's some hoons outside drifting. Um, but yeah, so, so now you can actually work with more audio, whether it's electronic, acoustic or an acapella, you're a bit more confident in putting them to a grid. Once they're on a grid guys, I promise Ableton's not boring. This is where the fun starts. All right. So we're going to talk about that before I start on the slicing and dicing. Any questions on acapella warping or anything so far? All good, pretty clear. If I did that a bit quickly, it's all in the recording so you can see the exact steps I did one by one, right? So now um, let's actually look into what we're gonna learn today. We're gonna learn some basic, in, in basic terms, it's audio editing, right? But because it's with music, it's a lot more fun and it feels more like you're, you're remixing things. We're going to learn how to split, cut, copy, paste, delete. These, these terms are familiar and it actually is just as easy as like whether you've worked at spreadsheets or Microsoft Word, like cut, copy, paste is exactly the same. Um, how to reverse a track, how to duplicate a track, consolidate, which is a thing in Ableton, which is really handy. Um, so yeah, let's, let's just start with that. So the way I'm going to show it to you is just by playing with something. So I know everything in my, in my project here has warped, so I can take anything. So let me just take, I'm gonna slow it down. So the original BPM is like 102-ish. So I'm just gonna change my project BPM to match. Okay, so now I wanna copy this Missy Elliott work it and I wanna paste it in a track. So what I could do is Command C. So just, you gotta believe me, I'm doing it on my keyboard, Command C, right? And then, now again, to zoom out, I'm using that zoom on top and pulling up, okay? Zoom out and then scroll up, scroll down with your cursor. To, to make a new audio track, guys, what's, what's the shortcut, Pranch, do you remember? What's the keyboard shortcut to make a new audio track? No, I don't remember, bro. No worries, man. Command T, all right, for audio track. Command Shift T for MIDI, but we're right now just working with audio. So Command T, uh, let's say I've already made one and I'm calling it Play, all right? I want to find the start of the grid. So basically any whole number here rather than pasting it in the middle, just so it's on the grid and paste. That's it. So now if I click this and play the metronome. So I have a little, what is it? Eight bar sample. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Eight bar sample over here. Um, that I'm, that I'm oh, four, sorry, four bar sample that I have and I can, I can play with. So let's go through some of the, the basic, uh, you know, commands over here that, that you're going to learn. So firstly, to select a part of the track, um, Eric, you might've noticed this in Pro Tools in the multi-tip tool in Pro Tool. If you, if you're at the middle, if you're at the top of the track, it becomes a trimmer. But if you're at the mid, like underneath that pink line, it's more of a selector. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to delete something. So let's say you want this, but you just don't want I don't want that second kick drum here. I'm selecting just that. And on my keyboard, I'm just hitting backspace or delete. Why does it work? Oops. These are the things I do subconsciously and then if I have to teach them, I don't know how to do them. You're in, you're in automation mode, dude. So if you turn off automation mode, it will do it. Thank you, sir. There we go. So that was the next thing I was going to teach us automation mode. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. I'm glad we have a legit producer here. Um, you select it and then you hit delete. And, and yeah, th th then it actually deletes, the, uh, deletes that part. So now I still have the track, but there'll be a silence there. Okay, so that's a really simple command. Now, how all this adds up and you can make something unique, I'll, I'll show you in a sec. 
Now, what if you want to make a split in a track? What I mean by split is how I drew that line earlier, right? So let's say, let's say I want to split it over here. Yeah, let's say I want like that to repeat. So I make a split over there. So to split, I go command E. All right. And all of these will be in the notes. So now what happens if I split, I can make another split over here and I can now select this as like its individual mini clip as a part of these other clips. And now I can either trim just this or trim it from there, or I can go command D, which is the next command to learn duplicate. So command D will duplicate it. So now it sounds like, okay. So that's how earlier when I showed you like the Soweto transition, how it goes. Soweto, Eto, that's, that's just how it is. You just select that part that you want to duplicate and you just go command D and command is one of those. You can like hold it down and it'll just keep duplicating. It's pretty handy. Once you have like a full eight bar loop that you want to just duplicate, just go command D and it just goes like eight, 16, 32, however you, however long you want. All right. So, um, yeah, that's, that's delete. And yeah, we'll, we'll be cr more creative with it in just a sec. And then you want to cut something. So let's say I want to cut this so I can just select it and go command X and then select anything else and go command V. Cool. Um, paste command V. So yeah, you know, copy command C command X command V. I think those are pretty self-explanatory and they're really handy in Ableton. Um, and now reverse. So this one's pretty, pretty fun, right? Like reversing a sound always really fun. So let's say I just, I want to reverse just this clip over here and hear what it sounds like. I just have to select the clip and I can either click reverse over here, R E V or on my keyboard, I can just click R. So if I click R, it now sounds like this. Cool. So can you hear the difference? So command Z to undo and then command shift Z will reverse it again. Cool. So that's, that's reverse. And now let's say for example, okay, I'm going to create, I'm going to like do this again, but I'm going to now try and create something kind of cool. Um, if I can, and then what I'm going to do is show you something called consolidate, which is, it'll start looking like a mess. If you make chops over here and reverse over here and delete over there. And if you want to just go, I'm done jamming. I want it to look neat again and consolidate it as a new audio file. There's a really cool shortcut, which is consolidate, which is command J. Seems like a lot of shortcuts, but you'll get used to them pretty quick. Um, so now let me try and just work something here. So I like that. I like snare hit. So I'm going to just cut over there, cut over here, cut it and bring it to over here. Cool. So I added that snare hit there. Let's say I like, I like that over here as well, that element. So I'm going to cut that as well. But I, let's say I want silence here. I'm going to delete it there and paste that. So, um, yeah, I'm just literally like mucking around. Let's just use that for example's sake. So everything I did, it seemed a little bit quick, but I just used the commands I showed you. I was cutting things, copying things, pasting things. Okay. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the rest. So I just have this, what is it? A one bar loop. Um, okay. And I'm going to duplicate it. So command D. So now kind of similar to the original. Um, not, not, not too different, but that's, that's, I'm not, I'm not edited. So. Now, but the, the cool thing is now that I have other things warped, what if I want to add some, I don't know, some chords behind it. I know that there are some chords ahead of, uh, like when no eyes starts. So I'm just going to take no eyes. I'm just going to move it here for convenience. So I can see my thing over here. I'm going to pull it out a bit. Okay. So yeah, there's some chords over here. 
Change the mode to complex pro. I have like four bars over there. So let me just copy, pay, copy that. And I don't know how it's going to sound. I'm just going to chuck it here for now. Um, so let's play. I'm gonna make it a bit faster. But what if I want to reverse the pad? So they sound like they're coming up. Like right now they're coming down, right? And click each. I've cut each one and I'm reversing each one. Now notice when, oh, I haven't told you consolidate yet. Sorry. Before we get to these pads, can you see over here now, it looks like a little bit of a um, flesh wound in terms of all of these like gaps over here and stuff. So what I can do is I can just select it all and go command J. So that consolidates it. So can, can you now see the difference? It's now one big clip. Okay. Now there's some pros and cons here. The, the cons is I'm not committed to it. Well, the, the, actually the pro is you not commit to it because in, in audio, you can have so many things that you just keep fucking around and you never commit. So command J is a good trick. Consolidate. I'm happy with that for now. Let me move on. The con is you lose the ability to, you know, when it was not consolidated, I can go to just this and reverse it or just that. And I don't know, turn the pitch up, which is something I'll show you later. But after it's consolidated, I I'm affecting the whole clip. I can still go in and make a cut. Okay. But I'd have to do it again. So yeah, it's important to understand the, dis the distinctions pre-consolidated. It's a bunch of pre-cut clips with the individual settings post consolidation. It's one clip. That's like an export that you're now affecting the entire clip. So I've consolidated that. So I had this, yeah, clap to no eyes over here. Right. And if you noticed, I made a cut and I reversed this and now it's doing it quickly, but earlier it was taking a lot of time. Oh man. Anyway, what I wanted to, what I wanted to tell you while, while it did that, cause it only does that the first time is if you reverse something, if you cut and then reverse something and it takes a lot of time, it's because what Ableton's doing is it knows you just want to reverse that two seconds, but it is reversing the whole track at the back and then matching which seconds you want to reverse and showing it to you. So quick way around that is if you just want to choose something and reverse just that really quickly, you can go command A, select it, command J. So now it consolidates just that clip. Now, if I hit reverse, it's only reversing that part of the audio and it's quicker to move on. Okay. Um, just feel free to ask me questions if that didn't really make sense. But so now what I'm doing is I've just reversed every single um, no eyes chord. So instead of the chords coming in as boom, it's the other way. It's boom. Okay. So let's hear what that sounds like. Better than, better than my voice for sure. Um, all right. So that's, that's a little thing. Now let's say I want to add more percussions. This is where for producers, uh, something called sample libraries come in, come in handy. Now I know you probably don't have, you might have some sample libraries already loaded into Ableton. I'm going to attach this sample pack for you after, so you can have some more resources to play with, but this is where you can get pretty, um, experimental, creative. They're usually always in sync as well. So let me just pull that in and let's see what that sounds like. Not the best actually. Um, so Ooh, okay. Sorry guys. This usually works better. <laughs> um, uh, let's find a, there we go. Okay, I see what the problem is. It's actually I'm I actually need to warp it. I'm actually a little bit out of sync. Now I do like some parts of that, I just don't like all parts of it, but now I know how to actually select parts that I like. So I don't like any of this, so I'm gonna command D delete it. anything's out of time, I'm just pulling it back on time. All right. So you guys know all the skills I'm using. I'm not doing anything new.
and let's say that's all I like and I just want to duplicate that okay this is just for example sake so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that command J now why am I choosing the entire region from 561 560, 563 because it's a two bar loop so then if I go consolidate and then if I go just command D and duplicate it's going to perfectly loop because it's exactly two bars right so it all comes back to counting and music theory um, Highlighter is glitching again. Let me just restart that. There we go. Cool. So now let's hear it. Okay. So yeah, there's some parts of like work it that are not really sounding the best right now. But for example's sake, we're just going to move on. Um, and guys, remember when you're starting off as well, it doesn't matter if things don't sound. Oh, this is why. Just the fucking template above it. I've got to delete that. Let's try it now. Okay. Still, something's a little bit off, but we're just gonna just go with it for now. Because yeah, so when when you guys try this at home as well, it's okay if some of the stuff doesn't sound exactly like perfect on day one. What's important is you just get a grasp of the tools and confidence with these keyboard shortcuts, so you can like quickly whiz around the software. So what I'm doing now is like, let me try some vocals on it. So I'm going to, I know this is already warped as long as I select it properly, which means like, there you go. It's not selected properly. I got to start it on the one. There you go. All right. So I could have just messed that up. So I take that. I just want a little bit. So I'm going to command, co command C, copy that, zoom out, go down here, paste it. So now let's just see what that sounds like. It's a lonely night. Everybody's happy. It's a lonely night. This is really pissing me off. I'm just gonna delete that. Lonely night. Sorry, guys. Um, cool. There we go. Let's just try that. It's a lonely night. Cool. So. Are you guys following what I've done so far? I've just warped a few things. I've just put, they're all on a grid. So when I pull them on, I don't have to worry about sync and stuff. There was an exception with that sample that seemed to be out, out a little bit, but mostly everything's going to be in sync. So it's really easy for me to just jam and put things on. So including I put a vocal, which you'd be like, how did you get that to sync? Because I've already synced it before, warped it. And I've remember, ideally remember to hit save, which I forgot to do that right then. Um, then it's always going to be in sync. You can always pull it on. If you have a beat or you want some, you want to mash up something, you can always like mash things up really easily. So those are the simple commands. There's also, I've taught you a lot about the keyboard, I feel. There's also a few things with the mouse um, that are good to know. So for example, you can drag and drop things. Sorry, I'm going to have to disable that highlighter because it's glitching. So to drag and drop things, let's say I want to move this there. I can literally click the top of it where the glove comes. So again, just like Pro Tools, Eric, over here, there's no glove. On top, there's a glove. So I take it. I drag it, I move it. It's pretty intuitive. But what's handy is if I take it, if I hold Alt um, or Option on, on a Mac, and if I drag it and then release it while holding Alt, it copies it. It doesn't cut it. Okay. So Alt is, Alt is really handy for that as well. Um, and then let's say, for example, I like all of this. I just don't want this third one. I can always select a clip and just click zero to deactivate or activate that clip. So sometimes if you see a clip and it's showing up as clip deactivated, you're not sure why it's probably just zero. So it just tends to deactivate it. So you can turn something off without having to like turn off the whole channel. Everybody's happy. Cool. And you can, yeah, you can get some unexpectedly good effects from just sometimes removing things rather than adding things. Um, so that's that. Okay. Now, um, any questions on this so far before I show you like another le level of splicing and dicing? All good. Cool. Somewhat interesting. More than better than warping. That's good. So yeah, these are what I've called the basics. Now I'm going to show you what's called automation mode, which is what I was on earlier, which Henry very kindly pointed out, which is why it wasn't working like it should. So over here, I've left all of the track volumes on zero, right? Oops. Yes, now it is all on zero, okay? So what that means is I'm not like playing with the volumes. I'm not like 
no, they, they just these are just playing the tracks. The only things that are changing is like me cutting and pasting what comes here, what comes there, etc. So if I want to, like, remember I showed you in the last video, you can like change the BPM over time or change the volume over time. So to do that, you can you actually have to turn on ideally turn on automation mode. So that's this little button over here. Okay, and you can see that it shows a red line, and I'll show you what all this means in a second. Another shortcut to do it is just by tapping A. Okay, so A for automation. All right. So I'll show you what automation mode does in a sec. But one thing I just want to caveat is if your keyboard, which is the top right button over here, can you see this? If that's on, A is not going to work. Does anyone understand? Does anyone know the reason why? I'm just curious. The, the keyboard over there is a hint. Does anyone know what's happened to Ableton as soon as I've hit this on? Eric, take a stab. Yeah, that's turns your turns your keyboard into an actual keyboard. Exactly. So it actually turns my yeah. And Jamie was really interested about this. If she sees the recording, she wanted to know how your keyboard can be turned into a MIDI controller. Where you, this is the note C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and these are the black keys. Right. We can touch on that more when we get to MIDI. But if that's on, you're now sell, you're now telling Ableton play note C in a MIDI track somewhere. Right. So it's not going to turn on or off automation mode because it's playing the note C. That's why. If you turn that off, now this is back to being normal keyboard shortcuts. Okay. So A turns on automation mode. Now let's say I want um, these bands a lonely night. to be even more dramatic, like the swell of them. I can actually click the parameter I want to automate. So now I'm clicking the track volume. Now can you see over here? It says mixer track volume. That this is telling me what. Um, parameter is being indicated by this line automation. So now I can actually tell it to, I can click a line over here, like just click there to, oops, click there to um, drop a dot. As you can see, it's at zero. Click there to drop another dot, and I can move that up or down. Okay. So what I'm going to do, just to make it easier, like how I duplicated automation, uh, how I duplicated the track by doing Command D. I want to show you a trick. If you click this button. You actually can see just the automation in the new lane. So if I select and delete anything over here, I don't actually delete the audio. The audio is still safe up here. I'm just selecting and deleting, as you can see over here, the mixer's track volume. Okay. So if I make a cool automation here that I want to repeat, so let's say it's like this. Let's see what that sounds like. It's a lonely night. Okay, just to be more dramatic, I'm just going to turn up the clip volume. I'll show you what that means later. But yeah, it's a lonely night. Cool. Now I want all of them to start like this. I can just select that command C to copy and then command paste or command D duplicates. So now it's a lonely night. Everybody's happy. It's a lonely night. Okay. So that's now added a whole new layer of, um, I guess like change that's happening rather than the pad still playing. I've made it even a bit more unique. Another hot tip over here for automation is if you actually hold the button option, it creates this little curve icon next to my arrow. And now if I pull, I can curve something rather than having a linear rise it can be a curve. So now it can sound even a bit more like smoother or dramatic. It's a lonely night. Okay. So yeah, you can, you can hear the difference. It's, it's more swelling. Um, it's rising a bit more dramatically. Everybody's happy. Okay. So yeah, and you can see the track volume being automated. You can actually see I've just pressed A. Now all the ugly lines disappear and just look at the track volume. What's happening? Everybody's happy. Oh, it's going up on its own. So that's automation and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really handy because you can for now just worry about automating the, the clips, um, uh, volume maybe. And then in later classes, we're going to learn things like effects. So when you have effects, let's say reverb, but sometimes it's fun to have more reverb at a certain part or less room size or decay and all these things that you learn. So um, then automation becomes really important because it adds movement and feel to a track and makes it feel more like human. Um, but for now, track volume is something you can play with automated. All right. Couple of other things I already showed you the trimmer when the automation mode is off you'll actually see these lines come up over here and they're actually fades. So you can grab them and you can just drag it across to fade. So that can also create like a pretty unique 
effect. So if I, yeah, let's say if I like wanna, I don't know, like, like how I, I, I built the automation over here. Another way I could have done that same thing is I could have just gone here and gone fade. All right. When there's two clips together like this, it's a cross fade. Um, so it's actually fading out the first track and fading out the second track. But fades are, are really useful as well. And you can, you can create some unique, like if you want this, uh, the vocal to sound like it's just creeping in. It's a lonely night. Rather than it just coming like all the way in. It's a lonely night. So a little bit more subtle. It's a lonely night. So, yeah, th that's automation mode. Um, any questions on automation? Nope. Okay, cool. And then the last thing I'll show you is transpose. So a lot of people might wonder like how do producers take someone's voice and then make it sound like a girl's or make it sound chipmunk or, um, or, or, you know, make it sound really deep. So transpose is a really cool function and this actually changes the pitch of the track. Earlier I told you that warping allows you to change the speed without affecting the pitch. It also lets you change the pitch without affecting the speed. So what you can do is you select the track. Let's solo just this one for now. And this is what it sounds like originally, right? It's a lonely night. But I can take this transpose and I can pitch it, let's say down six semitones, so minus six. So SD is semitones. That's a, a basically every single keyboard note is a semitone. We'll, we'll, we'll get into pitch later. Right now, just think about it as a way of measuring pitch. Where minus 12 is going down an octave and plus 12 is going up an octave. So playing the same note, but higher up on the keyboard. So let's go minus six for now. It's a lonely night. Okay, you can hear that. It's a lonely night. Sounds a bit pitched down. This is where you can also start to play with the other warp modes. I've told you to just stick to Complex Pro for now for warping and stuff, but have a play and see what these other ones sound like as well. It's a lonely night. They all have like a little bit different. It's a lonely night. Characteristics to them. It's a lonely night. It's a lonely night. All right. So, um, yeah, just, just go ahead and have a play. For, I mostly just use Complex Pro um, to keep things sounding as they are, like pr pr preserve the original sound, and then beats for beats for drums, and also just for experimental stuff. It's a lonely night. So that's transpose. I can also pitch it up. It's a lonely night. Okay, if I keep it in Complex, it'll preserve it a bit more. It's a lonely night. So, yep, that's, that's how to transpose things. So now you can actually just take um one clip and transpose just that so for example let's say i want to make this bad sound higher right now it's it's a lonely night right this bad here i'm gonna switch it to complex and make turn it up an octave okay i'm just gonna delete the automation so to delete the automation you click the box that's being automated and go command delete i'll put all of this in the um in, in the notes but i'm gonna just turn it up for now Sounds, sounds kind of funny, but it could be kind of cool. So I'm going to select all of them and transpose it all up 12. So now it sounds like this. It's a lonely night. Everybody's happy. And if I'm liking it, I can duplicate the entire track as well. I showed you earlier, you can duplicate a clip. I can even just click the, the, the channel there and do the same thing. Command D, duplicate. And now below it, I have the same track duplicated. And I can call this Claptone Original, and I can select them and move the transpose back to zero just by clicking Delete. It resets it back to the original. So now I have a like a, a low channel and a high channel. It's a lonely night. Everybody's happy. You gotta play with it to get some interesting effects. This is not like sounding the best thing so far. I'm just making it up as I go on the fly, but it's just to show you how you can have a play. Cool. So those are like, yeah, the basic functions I wanted to show you that allows you to slice and dice audio. So the takeaway for this is if you've ever had that mashup idea in your head um, of, you know, just something you really wanted, like a like few tracks that you know go well together, that, that you really wanted to have a play with. Um, then then in the homework, this is what you could try, is like getting one of the tracks that you like. I know Likit, I don't know if he's still here, but Likit really likes um, 
uh, All That Matters by Kolsch and Don't Give Up by Chicane, but they don't match key. And so he's always wanted to try and experiment with like matching them. So this could be a, you know, a good place to start. You know, in, in the homework, I'm, I've, actually, I've actually just written some ideas of what you can do to put this to practice. So you can, you know, one thing I've started with, Eric, um, I don't know how much you know about music theory and keys and pitch. I'm guessing you're okay with it. But uh, like anyone that's done the DJ class knows now about keys and harmonic mixing. So that's the fact that every track goes with four other keys really well. Um, and so for mashups, especially, you want to try and find tracks that are harmonic with each other, or you're going to get things that sound out of key. And that sounds, the word we say is dissonant. It just, you can just taste that it doesn't sound good. Um, although sometimes can have some surprising effects. So yeah, the pre, pre watch thing, if you want to do is just learn a little bit of, about harmonic mixing. You can do it through my DJ class link that I'll, I'll share and include in the notes or online. There's like five minute summaries of how it works. Um, if you're new to phrase and counting and stuff, so not maybe not for the people in this call, but like Arshia last time said that um, she may struggle with counting beats. That's really like a prerequisite to playing with audio is knowing whether one, two, three, four lie. So maybe watch the beat matching class. And then I'll link a sample pack. So what you can do is download the sample pack, um, get any additional tracks or acapellas you want to mess with and warp them. And then after this, it's your choice. If you want to make an experimental eight bar loop or something like I was doing where it's a beat from something and then a pad from something else and an acapella from something else. And you just want to make something unique. Try that. Otherwise, like option two is make a mashup, right? You may not have as many different channels. You may just have like one track and one acapella or I don't know, whatever you want to mash up. It might just be two or three things, but for longer. Um, but now you know like how to fit them to a grid, how to make them start at the right time. Um, layer this over layer that and even automate things if you like and yeah things like reverb and how to make it sound professional and not distort etc we'll, we'll get to later on um, yeah and then as I said it doesn't matter if it sounds bad initially okay just and if you don't want to share it to anyone don't but if you want to share it I'm all, I think we're all happy to hear whatever you guys come up with but I think for now it's just about getting confident in the software and like moving things around Sweet. That's that. Any, I, um, I don't know, any, any thoughts? Is that, is, do you feel that's, that's helpful in helping you achieve whatever it is you, you guys want to do individually? Yeah. Eric, are you looking to um, make tracks as well? Or is it more just for the professional reason of understanding what um, people like Younger and stuff are doing? More so just information. Um, okay. Cool. I don't, I mean, maybe just for shits and giggles, but more so just information for the time being, I reckon. Nice, man. That's cool. Um, just a heads up that like people are younger, obviously, are, they're doing the production side, but actually he's using a lot of the same basic skills I've said, right? Because it's all the same elements. But then mm. when he's on stage and he's doing the things that you're having to manage, it's a, it's, it's a little bit more live performance side where he'd be, mm. use, he'd be doing things like sending MIDI from his Ableton to an external synthesizer and routing it back and stuff. So I'm not sure if we're going to touch on like that specifically in this class, mainly because I'm also not a pro on that. That's like still something I'm learning, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get closer to things like MIDI and live performance later on. I mean, that side of things is just signal flow. So I don't really struggle there. It's literally oh, okay. just when it gets into the box, I just have no fucking clue what he's doing, which is terrible because I've worked with him for three fucking years. <laughs> but like, yeah, the hardware side of things is, is not so much of an issue. Like, oh, that's good. Yeah. Even like things like mi routing MIDI and stuff you're pretty familiar with. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What he's doing, like what, what he's actually doing on Ableton. Literally. Yeah, okay, okay. Then, then this, uh, all these basics would be, I think, helpful. Useful. Are, are you seeing similarities to Pro Tools or differences? No, I'm seeing similarities, um, but just as equally, there are you know the differences are far far apart just as well. Like it's it's it, it's a DOW, like you know what I mean. It's it's going to have its similarities regardless of you know whichever one you use and stuff. Like the shortcuts are based off of a syntax, so it's like cop, you know copy and paste literally like you know i mean like it's it's based on a, a similar principle and people just try different things yeah like um i think even the command e function for you for you to be able to like split tracks is the same in logic as well if, I remember, if I remember correctly 
yeah yeah and um and well pointed out with the with with uh chopping tracks as well like in terms of just refining them it is if you go along the, t- the name bar it's the same in pro tools as well okay so there are similarities there are uh, across the board um so it, it does help the knowledge gap so just as well for anyone else that's kind of looking to you know learn other stuff you learn this it does transpose over it's not always going to be linear it's always yeah. you know it does some bits of information is you know directly um like corresponded to other tra- other track i'm just gonna stop talking for now oh, that's, <laughs> that's too that's early really, that's really that's a good point it's not um if you want to switch daws in the future this is not wasted knowledge i think is the point mm-hmm. Hey, while well, hang on, I just remembered one thing about split. I forgot to show you all. That's pretty cool. So you can, if let's say I want to make a split here and here, and just select this section, I can go here and click Command E, and I can go here and click Command E, and now I've done it. But an easier way is I can just select the range and then click Command E, and it makes splits on either side. It bookends a split, and yeah, I mean it's just a small thing, but I thought I would add that. Cool. Um, Branch, any yeah. Thoughts, takeaways, if, if there's a mashup idea floating around in your head that you want to play with or how do you think you might use this stuff? Yeah, man, there's one. I'll definitely work on it. But I, guess I have to get used to like all the shortcuts and stuff like that. Yes, it's going to take a bit of time to get used to all of it. Yeah, I understand, man. No, getting used to an audio software for the first time is like a learning curve. Um, yeah. Guys, feel free to like give me feedback. Like, Let's say next week we push on and you're feeling like guys I, like I haven't even got a grasp of the ABCs yet happy to like slow it down or have a class where we just stop don't learn anything new but just review and ask questions if, if that's what you want um, but yeah the more you go and the more you have a play the more questions you'll have so the more I guess we can be like a bit more like consulty Likit what do you think man straight to uh, coach versus chicane oh yeah gonna do that mashup for sure <laughs> uh, yeah man um, I think it's Easier to use this than Tractor if you're making mashups and all like Absolutely. Tractor you have only two decks and try your best guess and like overlaying tracks on each other. This one is pretty much you know you can have more oversight over the whole track. So that's it, man. Actually, I just just remembered I literally made a mash well, not a mashup. I just chucked an acapella on a track just for a mix that I put out a few hours ago. But so, yeah, it's the, the same no eyes acapella. And yeah, it just goes like this, see? Hang on, it's way too loud for you. Let me cut it down a bit. It's a lonely night. Everybody's happy. Then turn around. So that's just the same drop thing that I showed you. But what's cool is because it's walk, <coughs> I went all the way to the end of the track and I found a part where he just mumbles. It's actually my favorite part of the track. But I keep going, there it is. See, he's just saying this. It's a lonely night. I that makes me fucking jizz each time. I love that. Everybody's <laughs> happy. Sorry, guys, not very professional. But if I take that and I I I, I took the end of the track and I made I use it as a build up, so now it works. Like- it's a lonely night. Everybody's happy. I see nothing. No eyes. No eyes on. It's a lonely night. So it kind of like teases the idea before it comes in. So yeah, that that's just an example. If that I don't know inspires you, it's very simple. I took a a track that's done a lot of the work by sounding good already, and just added a little leg- little um little uh, acapella on it. That's it. Uh, I remember how we did that in Tractor was like loop, right? Like loop certain sections and that tease that part in an earlier section of the song. Or... Yeah, you can hot cue, go to eight, like cue eight if that's the end of the track, play that yeah. part. And then when it's the drop, like hit one. But over here, you just have like, see, the thing is, the, I could have done this in Tractor arrangement wise, but this is what you learn next class. And by the way, if anyone has to go, go, but I'm ra- wrapping up in 30 seconds. What I couldn't do is effects. So, for example, I wanted this to duck in volume every time the kick drum hits. That's something called side chaining, which you'll learn later. But if you look at this compressor over here, it's a lonely night. Very subtly, the volume is actually ducking every time the kick drum hits. So it sounds more like it's 
a part of the first song rather than just floating on top of the first song. It's a lonely night. And the second thing is I added some overdrive. So without any effects, it just sounds like it's a lonely night. And then with, it's a lonely night. Right? It's just a little bit crunchier. So those are little things that you can add in Tractor that make it sound a bit more polished. Um, that in, sorry, in Ableton, that in Tractor would just be um, like, he's obviously just chucked an acapella on top of it. It's cool. It's raw. It's a different sound, but yeah, that's that. All right. Shenry, any, uh, any closing thoughts? How is this for your, for an idea of, is, I don't know, what are you expecting? Uh, no, it was really good. Thanks for letting me bounce in. Um, see, so yeah, I did it. It's also okay. fun getting reminded of things that, you know, I've forgotten about or, um, take for granted these days. Lies. <laughs> this man has put out 12 EPs, boys. So uh, check out his Spotify, fucking talented muso. And he's very productive. So I really respect him for that. He might, maybe, no pressure, take, do a class or go do one of these classes in the future to get a hang of it. So that'll be fun. All right. Um, cheers, guys. Have a good one. Make some mashups, make some edits. I hope this is more fun than warping. <laughs> Nice one, boys. Thanks, right. man. Have a good one. Thanks, yeah. man. See you guys. Have a good one. Thanks, boys.